Previously on the Traveling Together Journal, we spent five days on Isla Utila, where we learned to scuba dive and got to swim with rough-toothed dolphins before taking the ferry back to mainland Honduras. So we're obviously back in the truck and it feels good. It's nice to be back in our home and back on the road and everything seems to be working properly. But it was really nice to take a break, feeling refreshed and excited about uh, being on our own adventures again. We were making our way from the port town, La Ciba, up to the Pico Benito National Park in the nearby mountains. As per usual, we don't really quite know what we're doing. There's supposed to be a hike here. We're supposed to cross some bridge and go find some waterfall. I feel like saying that we don't swim. quite know what we're doing is giving us more credit than we deserve. <laughs> Fortunately, we found the park office where we paid our $8 entry fee and were given directions to a three hour hike that was supposed to lead to a big waterfall. a fun hike but we are a very sweaty hot mess Matt said that he thought he saw a place that we could get into the river hopefully we find a nice little swimming pool to uh, clean our dirty overland bodies So Amy told me that the toilet situation was kind of weird last night when we showed up. She went and checked it out. And it is pretty funny. <laughs> so you come over and you can see that the dogs have torn the trash can apart. And then the restroom itself looks like two people came in here tore all their clothes off, threw them everywhere, and then couldn't be bothered to come back and get them. The toilet's just constantly running, and the floor's all wet. So, not an ideal situation. Also not like the most disgusting bathroom we've used or anything. But then the funny part is, they have these other four restrooms, and they have a sign up, if you want a clean toilet, it's going to cost you three limpara. So, they know that that toilet's disgusting, but they've given up on it. You can use that one for free. You want a clean toilet, you gotta pay. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that thinks that's really funny, but... I'm sharing it with you. So there you go, maybe someone else agrees. Alright, 
Matt just said it feels like we're on a safari, which it does. We just got coming through the uh, bamboo zone. Mini stream crossing. Extreme! Ah! Oh, it looks like we're about to come up to the giant palm zone. <laughs> nice announcing here. <laughs> avoids San Pedro de Sula, which is the notorious capital of the high homicide rates of Honduras. The Google Maps is going to take us five hours and 17 minutes to get to Parque Nacional Montoña de Seleque. of this park is it's really beautiful it's very nice the temperature is super fresh feels great smells like pine trees because there's a lot of pine trees and we've got this like pretty nice level area to camp and we are just packing up we're about to go head out onto a hike so we are here at 1400 meters above sea level and we're gonna go on this black trail up to these switchbacks. I'll probably try to convince Amy to turn around right here. <laughs> but we're planning on going up here, going on this brown trail, and going to this lookout where we're supposed to be able to see, I believe this cascada, which is a big waterfall. And we'll be at 2,000 meters above sea level. <music> arrived at this hotel El Bosque. It's like a nice level spot. We've got a nice beautiful tree above us for some shade. So it's totally raining really hard and two huge truckloads of dudes just showed up to play a soccer game. We got the best seats in the house right under our dry little awning. check out some cool ruins. The Copan archaeological site was the capital city of a major Maya kingdom from the 5th to 9th centuries AD. 
It was home to 15,000 people at the time. The archaeological site is made up of many structures and courtyards, including examples of pyramid and temple architecture of a style common to the Mayan civilizations, and one of the largest ball courts of its time. What Copan is most well known for, though, is the large number of intricate carvings. A popular theory is that Copan's location on the outer edge of Maya territory led the civilization to show their strong ties to Maya culture through abundant sculpture and mosaic. One of the most common images is that of the scarlet macaw, a brilliantly colored bird that ranged throughout the Maya world and was used as a symbol of the god of the sun. We enjoyed the large number of macaws still living in the trees around the site today. Well, we finished up at the main archaeological site and we're headed back to the truck. I like it when they leave the ruins kind of uncovered but not restored. These ones were mostly like that. Um, pretty cool, like just huge trees growing up through these old ruins and stuff. And you can see like the roots like pushing the rock structures apart. What'd you think, Amy? It was all right. No, I'm just kidding. No, it was really, really neat. How's it going, Jack Bear? He was just sleeping, snoozing away. Just what Jack Bears do. Next time on the Traveling Together Journal, we cross the border into Guatemala where we revisit some of our favorite spots and explore the back roads for new adventures.